if you're like most people, including myself, um, you would probably think that what you really want is to be happy. But the researchers on the field of positive psychology and the neuroscience of happiness have been able to conceptualize happiness in two specific ways that really work out the, the difference of what a lot of people tend to associate with happiness that usually changes. Um, so they think of it as either hedonic happiness or eudaimonic happiness. And when you think of hedonic happiness, what matters about it is really your emotions. It's about having positive emotions. It's about, um, you know, getting pleasure from things and really savoring um, the things that, that you do. And this is, this is a very, very powerful thing to do and to, to be able to have in your own life. But when you actually look at what the most successful people and the happiest in this sort of long term, they actually don't really associate this fulfillment to the hedonic happiness, but rather to the eudaimonic, which is the one that we can associate with meaning or meaningful happiness. And well, a lot of people tend to ask the question, right? It's, it's like the billion dollar question. What's, what's the meaning of life? And, and that's the, kind of the question that people tend to ask. But when, when we really delve into this thing, um, we realize that there's actually pillars as um, Emily Stefani in her book, The Power of Meaning would say, um, to meaning. That people tend to associate with really their, the fulfillment that they they had throughout their whole life, really, um, and not just this kind of short-term pleasure um, or enjoyment that you get sometimes. They, they associate it with things like belonging, like being part of a group of people that makes you feel like you're part of a larger thing, right? Um, or you know, belonging to someone, uh, if we're talking about a couple, for example, or family, this, this sort of sense of belonging really resonates with a lot of people and, and brings a lot of meaning to their own lives. Another thing is um, transcendence. And this is something you can experience in places like this, you know, in places where you can actually contemplate the beauty of nature and feel like you're connected to everything and really, really enjoy and, and become part of it to the point where you sort of lose the sense of self. You, you kind of even lose track of time. It, it seems like time dilates in some way and, and you're really immersed in that experience. It can also happen through rituals and religions or even psychedelics for other people. And that's another way that seems to really draw what is meaningful to people in uh, almost a spiritual level. Another one you can think about is storytelling. So you can think of this as not only the telling of a story, let's say with a friend, but also in terms of ancient stories, in terms of those stories that have been told for millennia um, to people to kind of give meaning to their own lives. You can think of these stories as part of religion or mythologies that um, you can find in holy books like the Bible, for example. And the other way you can think of stories is your own story. So really looking back at um, what sort of experience in your own life you've had and how you can frame it in a way that works for you rather than subtracting from you. Something that kind of helps you along the way and, and guides you um, rather than something that limits you. And because of course we can also tell ourselves stories that are not helping, right? And finally, and I would say the 
perhaps the, the most important and the most prevalent for a lot of people is a sense of purpose. So feeling like what you're doing is making a difference, is, is contributing to the greater whole. It's not, you're, you're not just doing things for your own happiness or for your own sake, but for something greater than that.